Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. You can't create jack shit from here. Chef Ramsay goes head to head with Long Island's most arrogant chef. I'm very excited to show Chef Ramsay what I can do. There will be no faults in what I produce. Whose business is clearly dying. There will be plenty of open tables, believe me. No happy hour here. Is he sleeping over there? Just an early bird special. I feel like I'm in Florida. His girlfriend not only supports him. Fire 14. Her parents have put their life savings into the restaurant as well. Put my home, my retirement, and everything else on the line with this young man. <laughs> but this guy doesn't think he's doing anything wrong. Oh, my God. How can you expect food if you're cooking this shit off? It's my restaurant, my rules, and that should be the bottom line. Can Gordon get through to him? I wish you got your ass kicked in a fucking kitchen. You should be ashamed. He can bust my balls, but the name on the awning is it's not Ramsey. Before he not only bankrupts himself. You sank half a million dollars into this shit? But his girlfriend's family as well. We're screwed. We should have never did this. One thing's for sure. There's a shocking conclusion that will change this family forever. I am out of it. I don't know what to do. I'm going to fucking knock somebody out. Great Neck, New York is an upscale community on the north shore of Long Island, where competition among Italian restaurants is fierce. Trobiano's has been struggling to survive for the past three years. Owned by Anthony Trobiano and his girlfriend's parents, they are now just months away from losing everything. My desire to own a restaurant basically started right after culinary school, uh, working for other people. Look at that, huh? And then I said to myself, why am I busting my ass for everybody when I could be doing it for myself? Yeah, Joe, put a steak knife on there. Anthony came to me one day and says, this place is available, you want to buy it? I don't know if it took balls or I was just plain stupid doing it. They go right over me and ask him. Having a business together, you know, you see too much, you're together too much, there's resentment because of it. Appetizers, they see go out or no? one minute. Tiff. I, I, I heard you. Me and Anthony have been together for six years. We used to never fight, ever. I thought he was like the best person in the world. And then we got here, I'm like, who am I going out with? I want a whole new fucking slip. You should have two. When it comes down to running the business, it's really Anthony that runs it. Hey, change the fucking ticket, bro. Come on. Fucking kid. It's my restaurant, my rules, and that should be the bottom line. Fire 14. At the beginning, Trobianos took off. We didn't maintain the food coming out fast enough with quality. And from there, our business decreased. There will be plenty of open tables, believe me. The early bird special was my idea. Any place you like? It's bringing in people to keep the boat afloat. How are we doing, folks? Everything all right? Forget about it. I feel like I'm in Florida. It's crazy. I'm working, killing myself to pay bills. I don't want to live like this. I don't. I don't really want to live this way anymore. It's depressing. I put my parents into this position. They were finally getting comfortable, and now they have no choice but to work, or they're going to lose everything. Anthony, he's only my daughter's boyfriend. I put my faith, I put my home, my retirement, my wife's well-being, everything else on the line with this young man. <laughs> At the end of the day, you know, it is my name on the awning. To think that my name is going down as well as the restaurant, that would definitely be disappointing. You guys have to run more food, OK? We are. More. The last three years have been rough. By this time in my life, I thought we would have been married, had kids already. If we don't get Chef Ramsay's help, there's no other options for us. OK, here we are. Oh, shit, it's for sale. No, that's an early bird dinner menu. 14 95 Fuck me, it's cheaper than the sub shop. Right, Trobiano. Here we are. Hello. Hi there. How are you? How are you? Gordon, please. First name is? Joe. Joe, good to see you. Very nice to meet you, Chef Likewise, Ramsey. Likewise, good Pat. to see you too. Nice Pat, to nice Pat. to see you. When Chef Ramsey came through that door, I thought it was a blessing. I think hopefully he'll put us straight. So, uh, who came up with the bright idea of opening a restaurant? You've bought a restaurant with your future father-in-law. It was just an exciting thing, you know? You are able to purchase a restaurant as a dream of mine. How old are you now? 28? 29? Mm -hmm. So you were 25 when you opened it? Mm -hmm. Which is fucking young to open a restaurant. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 Felt I was ready. Ambitious, you know? And have you trained in Italian restaurants? No, I have not. I felt I knew everything. I still do. Are you that arrogant? Possibly. 
I wouldn't open a fucking Italian restaurant without working in one. I definitely think Anthony needs to hear that he's arrogant because I say it to him sometimes and he takes it as, oh, yeah, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm gobsmacked that a young man at the age of 25 would manipulate his future brother-in-law to open an Italian restaurant, having never worked in a fucking Italian restaurant. That doesn't make sense. No offense, I didn't pin him down and handcuff him and said, I need your house to put the restaurant. But you've got the house now. Chef Ramsay was, you know, making me feel like it's my fault that the restaurant ain't doing too well. I have enough pressure as it is. You guys are struggling to get married, and you've been married for a long time. You know, that level of pressure, how do you manage that? It's been rough because we can't do what we want to do anymore. We just can't do it. Tiffany? I hate it here. I feel so mad at me that I'm saying this, but I do. I don't like it here. It's not that I don't like working. I like you, honestly. It's just hard yep. sometimes. Having Anthony and my parents as partners tends to be difficult. Anthony says one thing and then my parents say another, and, you know, sometimes they clash. Whose idea was put that pathetic sign in the window? Me. Bringing some sort of customers in, right? Yeah. It seems everyone's in agreement with, you know, the light-hearted decisions made by one individual. What Chef Ramsay had to say to Anthony was on the point, sitting back and just listening, and you say to yourself, wow, what the hell are we doing? Why did we do this? I'll be back in now. Chef Ramsay feels one way and I feel another. And at the end of the day, the name on the awning is Trobianos. It's not Ramsay. Probianos has unfortunately become known for one thing and one thing only. It's inexpensive early bird special. How are we doing, Ant? Beautiful. The restaurant is only minutes away from its nightly ritual. Hello. How are you? Were you early? Of course. <laughs> Put you right by the window. Oh, my goodness gracious. One thing all the family agree on is that the food is great. And Anthony, well, he's certainly a confident guy. Now, I may be in for a treat. And right now, it's time for the early bird. Here we go. This, good. Is, this is busy. Yes. Huh? Got there early, aren't they? 4.30. 4.30. Who eats that early, right? Wow. The decor matches the clientele. Drab, fuddy-duddy, yeah, and seriously old-fashioned. I feel like I've come to see my granny in her retirement home. I can't eat dinner at 4.30 in the afternoon. You enjoy your dinner? Well, I'm sure. So what would you recommend? The Trobiano salad is excellent. Uh -huh. It's chopped. Why would you chop it? People seem to love it. Is that because of their teeth? Maybe. The... <laughs> it must be a nightmare. Knife, fork, there spoon, and straw. Right. <laughs> I can't stand here. <laughs> Still need a few minutes? I know. I think I'm ready. All right. What would you Excellent. like? Uh, first thing, eggplant tower. Okay. Then I'll have the chicken wrapped shrimp, please. Finally, some fish. What would you recommend? The salmon's fresh. It comes with potatoes and vegetables or pasta. Any pasta you like. But you wouldn't serve spaghetti with the salmon? Yeah, people get it all the time, because they like to take the pasta home, usually. Let's go for the salmon and spaghetti bolognese. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Wow. Two for one. What up? You got it. Is he sleeping over there? Is he? Shit. Here we go, right here. Table 10's appetizers, please. All right. I'm very excited to show Chef Ramsay what I can do. I feel that there will be no faults in what I produce for him. There you go. Wow. The eggplant tower. Oh, my God. <laughs> When Chef Ramsay's appetizers were coming out, you could see his face like, what is this shit? I said, oh my god, we're dead. That's definitely not homemade mozzarella. It's ghastly, stone cold, solid, and tasteless. How are you, madam? How was dinner? Fair. Fair. And what have you got in the bag? What is that? Eggplant parmesan cheese. Oh, lovely. When will you have this? For lunch tomorrow? Yeah. So you're not coming back tomorrow? No, not tomorrow. Because you've got dinner there. Rock hard, I like your forever. British accent. Thank you. I like your lipstick. <laughs> it's great spending time in the company of the Golden Girls. <laughs> oh, the Golden Girls. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Kevin, bring it out. Wow. Oh chicken wrap shrimp. Okay. Thank you. Chicken and shrimp. Well, I've got the chicken. And where's the shrimp? Bingo. 
I'm struggling with that. Looks like chicken, tastes like shrimp. Or oh, shit. Joe. They are solid. I've never had a shrimp that hard. Why would you stick a shrimp inside a chicken? It's one of his creations, I guess. OK. You ready? Jesus. Oh, yes, thank you, yeah. Thank you. Jesus. Your shrimp was too hard. Rock hard, like a bullet. OK. He says, why would you put shrimp inside of a chicken? He says, I don't get it. All right? When the first dish came back, I was, I, I was disgusted, pissed off. I wanted to prove him wrong. I wanted to show him my cooking skills, you know, are up to par. Somebody please run this fucking food. That's a bolognese. Thank you. And there's a salmon. Thank you. OK. Christ almighty. Um, dry and absolutely hideous. Pretty silent, dry, like really dry. Okay. Would you mind just? Um, Not a problem. Tucking. Would you like another piece? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. No, thank you. Your salmon was too dry. He don't want another piece. He said this was brutal. Here you go. You want to taste? It? Throw it out. When it came back, I was just too pissed off to even taste it. I was furious at Chef Ramsay saying that my food is shit. Personally, I feel that it's the wrong opinion at this point. I'm fucking furious. I'm furious. Coming up, Chef Ramsay tries everything to get through to Anthony. Give me something, please. But he quickly finds out that Anthony feels he's too important to clean. You're telling me now that you don't clean. That's what we have staff for, right? Too confident to taste. Anthony, look at me. Taste. I just didn't want to taste it myself. And too stubborn to see that the relationships around him are on shaky ground. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear it, but you have to. This arrogant chef may be the one that pushes Chef Ramsay over the edge. Oh, shit. I am out of there. And out the door. We're finished. We might just fucking burn the place. It's only 7 p.m. Early bird customers have now left, and at a time when restaurants are usually bustling, Trobiano's is empty. All is quiet, except it's time for the family to hear from Gordon. Let's have a chat uh, together, yeah? One thing that I was absolutely amazed with this evening is the size of the portions. When you serve an entree, you're serving a second entree with it. It's been confirmed to why we don't open for lunch, because you're serving the lunch the night before. So they're robbing you. However, that's not the biggest problem. The food. Hideous. The Leaning Tower of Pisa. What, what, what's going on there with that? The eggplant tower? What was wrong with it? That's not fresh mozzarella. I'm really sorry. That's processed commercial crap. <laughs> Salmon, did you see it when it went back to the kitchen? Yes, I did. Yeah. Just because you may have the inclination that I'm acting like a dick, it was dry. I don't think you're acting like a dick. I just didn't want to taste it myself. It's hard to hear him get yelled at, but Chef Ramsay, he knows what he's talking about, so he should listen to him. Every time a plate comes back to my kitchen, I taste it. And then the worst dish, the shrimp and the chicken. Where'd you go looking for the shrimp? Just seems unique. Now I'm even more concerned about what you're tasting. I thought you had a better palate than the fucking customers in there this evening. It was hideous. You can bust my balls about my ego, but you should not be killing me over my food. I know I'm a great chef. I don't think he knew what he was talking about. OK, I'm out of here. It's been a tough day for everybody. <laughs> Good night, guys. 14.95. That's not easy, that, slapping a family in the face, especially when they're half a million dollars in debt and it's tough. I honestly don't know if I can turn this around. Oh, dear. Dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. <sighs> I don't know. We're so frustrated. We're so worn out. We're so yeah. beat up. We don't know what the fucking direction we're going anymore. Well, obviously, we have to find the right direction because well, we're drowning well, very quickly. Maybe this was a godsend that he came in. Do you know what? There's no way I can sleep. I've got to get back to the restaurant and actually find out what this guy's kitchen's like. What's he working with before I start putting my plan together? 
As Gordon ventures into the kitchen, the family continues their post-dinner meeting. You need to take criticism better. I'm gonna take criticism better. You're like, oh, these people know what the fuck they're talking about. You don't wanna hear it. Right, you don't wanna hear it, but you have to, though. Like, you gotta take it and be like, maybe I am doing something wrong. This is shocking. When was the last time this was clean inside? My goodness, man. Look at that bad. The floor is caked with grime. Oh, Christ. Oh, my God. When was the last time this was clean? Bloody hell. Oh, Christ almighty. What on earth is that? Oh. Smell. You know what you do wrong? You should take more, take control. more control of these guys, and I feel that you don't. If you want me to take the control, don't go second guess me about anything that I do. Behind, behind there? Oh my god. Shit. Look at that there. That is mouse or rat droppings. Oh my god. A couple of hours ago, I was feeling slightly embarrassed for them, slightly concerned in a big way, but now. When a chef let go of his kitchen like this, it proves he doesn't care. I want to be more involved in the business end of things. Forget the business aspect. Well, and your portion is the hosting portion. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. I was going back to the hotel, couldn't sleep, had a look in the kitchen, and I am absolutely fucking gobsmacked. How can you do that? And when that is? Say that again. What is that? What is that? Come here. Anthony, how can you cook in this? When was the last time this was cleaned? The kitchen? Well, we try to do it on a daily basis, I mean. What? Have you seen under there? Underneath? Underneath here. Joseph, would you mind having a look? I don't think you've actually seen this. Down there. I see it. Look at that. Oh, God. Please. Anthony, talk to me. Give me some form of feedback. Don't bullshit me. Give me something, please. Well, they're asked to do it every day, the staff. They're what? They're asked to do it every day. We're on our ass with half a million dollars debt, and you're telling me now that you don't even clean. Well, that's what we have staff for, right? Oh, my God. What's this, then? What's that on there? The droppings. They're not fucking caraway seeds. I wasn't aware of them. Couldn't imagine it was been that bad. From the surface, everything looks nice and nice. When you start digging, I can't just can't believe it. Isn't this your bedrock? Isn't this where it's all created from? You can't create jack shit from here. I swear to God, I don't think you give a fuck. You should be absolutely ashamed. Chef Ramsey came in like a bat out of hell, and again just whip the living crap out of me. There's only so much you, you could do or say. So why, Anthony? Give me something, please. Oh, my goodness, you yeah, love you. Come up with an answer, Anthony. Otherwise, I'm fucking out of here. I swear to God, I am fucking out of here. I can't take much more of this shit. Fuck it. You got no chance. <laughs> I am out of there. I am out of there. Anthony's arrogance and his refusal to take responsibility for his kitchen have pushed Gordon to his breaking point. I am out of there. When Gordon Ramsay walked out, I said that was it. We're finished. We might just fucking burn the place. I don't know what to do. Ramsey, you don't even want to help us. When I saw Chef Ramsey going out to the street, I was feeling a failure. I had to tell him how I felt and just not let this slip through our fingers. What the fuck's going on? Where do we stand? I want to get this place back. Why have you given up then? Tell me. There must be a reason. Because on the ambulance in there, you gave up years ago. Anthony. That's your family in there, right? And each and every one of them believe in you. Yeah. Don't you feel bad? 
Honestly. Don't you wake up a sleepless nights? Yeah, I do. I do. You ever had that burden on your shoulders? Somebody's house? Not quite to this extent, no. I've been in the industry for 21 fucking years busting my balls. I've made mistakes, yeah? I've had failures. But fuck me. Have but I learned from to... it? Exactly. I'm trying to learn from it. Are you? Yes, I am. By that in there? Come on. Fucking, come on. Fucking, huh? I think you've had it too easy. You're one lucky fucking boy to get hold of this restaurant at 25. And I don't see that fucking level of humbleness. Slightly arrogant, fine. But a little bit of humility. You know that. Are you able to move forward? Yeah. Chef Ramsay taught me you need to face reality. You need to realize that maybe you're not the only one involved in everything. Time to get humble and turn the corner. Let's go. We've just had a chat, and now we're going to clean. When that place is clean and you see the difference, you will respect it from a completely different level. Not just the kitchen, the ingredients. If that's not working, what chance have we got? Let's do it together. Oh, fuck. Let's go. When I seen Gordon Ramsay come back in, I said, oh, OK, there's still a little ray of hope. Declutter everything. We get rid of all the food first, yeah? If we're going to give this place a really good clean. At this point, I'll do anything and everything that Chef Ramsay does suggest. He's definitely a, a shot of reality. It's kind of just snapping me back into place. After a stressful night, Gordon chooses an unlikely spot to introduce the family to the first of many changes. What, are we going to slaughter our own beef? <laughs> <laughs> this is one idea, OK, in order to separate your restaurant from any other Italian restaurant anywhere near Great Neck. What do we get from cows? Make Every the milk, the butter, yeah. cheese. What do we do with milk and cheese? What do we make? Mozzarella, uh, no? Mozzarella, exactly. <laughs> Exactly that. Who's milked a cow before? No one. Oh, my God. <laughs> Miss Glamorous Pat. <laughs> gloves off, please. Gucci gloves off. Look at those gloves. Look. <laughs> you could have prepared me a little for this. Oh, my God. Nice and gentle now, yeah? Make sure your hands are warm. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah! Ah, it's going on! Just try and keep it in the bucket, but... <laughs> This was so out there to milk your own cow. I feel like you really say something, but I'm just yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get a little excited here. I never thought I'd see my wife milk a cow. She's over there playing with the others, going, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Come on, Tiffany, put both hands, please. Nothing's coming out. Oh, that's like... oh, Tiffany. I'll just squeeze it. Oh, <laughs> oh, my God, look at this. I can't believe I'm milking a cow. Oh, you've done that before. No, I just, I watch a lot of westerns. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Anthony, put some muscle into it. But she's running away. <laughs> You're not blaming somebody else again, are you? Come on. You're the chef. <laughs> well done. OK. On the back of last night's scenario, just bringing you four together and having some fun was great, because it looked like a family. Last night, everyone was in their own little turmoil, so today was really what we needed. This now needs to be pasteurized. We'll take it back and we'll start making our first ever fresh, homemade mozzarella. Ready? Great. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was pathetic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, teats no, are not your strong point, no. right? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Back at the restaurant, Gordon walks them through the process of making fresh mozzarella. Anthony, push all the way out so it gets really nice and shiny. Perfect. There you go. Look. That's it. You've got it. I didn't know how to make fresh mozzarella. <laughs> we actually had a nice little learning experience. 45 minutes a day. Chef Ramsay's idea to make fresh mozzarella here is definitely putting a stamp on Trobianos. It's something that people are going to remember. People are going to come for. With a number of bookings for Friday night, Gordon decides it's an opportune time to implement another one of his changes. OK, tonight, take down that sign. <laughs> the early bird's finished. You don't need it. You're running a restaurant, not a retirement home. Let's go. 
Now that the early bird menu is a thing of the past, Gordon introduces pasta and mozzarella specials to the dinner service. OK, spaghetti lobster. I don't want it flooded with a heavy coating of tomato sauce. Yeah, yeah and over here, homemade fresh mozzarella, yes, with caramelized red onions, escarole, bang. Beautiful. All right, two nice specials, yeah? OK, good. Hello, ladies. Going into dinner service, I'm real nervous. I got this buzz going on. We got a lot of things on the line here. So you want a mozzarella special? Yeah, you, you can bring them out with the appetizers here. Yeah. Thank you. Two more specials. Taste, 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 yeah? Yeah, I don't care if it's a fucking sauce or a breadcrumb. You taste, yes? We're looking good, looking good, looking good. Come on. Mozzarella is fresh. They actually milk the cow themselves. Right. Yeah. It is. yeah. It's delicious. It's delicious. Mike, spinach ravioli, lots of ravioli. Eliminating our early bird special is a lot more difficult. We have a lot more dishes to prepare for. I need the lobster special. We need to hurry up. Please. Let's go. Come on, go, 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 go. Anthony, look at me. Taste. You fucking taste. Yes, chef. I got to watch him, too. Yeah. I'm probably going to make a big sign. I think Anthony needs it, saying you have to taste the food before it goes out, or I'll kick his ass. OK, we're coming, we're coming. Here we go, here we go. Go. Mike, we got a side of linguine garlic and oil coming up. Nine and 10 right after another. It's busy. This guy's getting absolutely slammed. But he can move, huh? He's definitely got talent. But there's one thing this guy hasn't done is taste a thing. From a chef's point of view, how can you serve food out to the customers and not taste anything? Unacceptable. Beyond fucking belief. Now I'm locked out. While Anthony might not be tasting his food, the customers are. I mean, it's all right, you know, it's all right. And they're not impressed. It's all overcooked. Yes. It's special stuff. Right, yeah, it's dry. It seems like it's been around, yeah, not that being fresh. Right. Okay. Okay. Another, another fettuccine? Yes, please. He wants to look at the menu, so get him two menus. Anthony, yes. table 17, they're complaining yes. about their food, saying it's, this is too dry. There's two more gentlemen said the same thing, so they're going to look at something else. You got to fucking kidding me. Anthony, you got to taste this food. Come on. Now, we're playing games here. We're in the business over here. We're getting killed right now. Falling behind big time. It's an hour into dinner service, and a kitchen that is not used to being busy is starting to crumble. All right, it's 25 minutes away. By the time we go, I don't have to go to bed too. <laughs> Where's my potatoes? Oh, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Anthony was definitely getting his ass kicked tonight. Please get it out. Come on. The food was taking too long. People were scrambling because they were trying to rush. Go, 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 go. Hurry up. Oh, fuck. Something's burning. Fire. Oh, my God. That's not good. Joe. Anthony. Oh, fucking hell. With the kitchen already running behind, Michael's burnt entree has brought the dinner service to a grinding halt. Anthony! Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, my God. Yeah. Hold up, hold up. Hold up. Jesus Christ. We'll regroup here. We'll regroup, OK? On a night filled with more setbacks than successes, Anthony is trying to salvage the evening by pleasing the remaining customers. There's like nothing. I'm ashamed of uh, myself, and I didn't think it was as bad as the clientele found it to be, you know? Could be, I guess, blinders that I was wearing. You're not fucking pissed I am. They think tonight was a disaster. You know, it's depressing. And I know we have to change things, I just don't know what to do. Oh, oh my god. That was too slow. Can I have seltzer, please, with the wine? What's the matter? Can you please leave me alone? Please, I'm, I'm begging you to leave me alone. Tiffany and I's relationship has been rocky. The stress that we've been through over the past three years has definitely proved to be the breaking point. If the restaurant were to fail, maybe we don't move on. Maybe that's the end of our road. My God. OK. Tonight didn't go by without its problems. Anthony, from the first plate that left your kitchen to the last plate, you didn't taste a fucking thing. You can't be that fucking arrogant. 
It was a travesty. That is your fucking job. And the minute you don't do that, don't call yourself a chef. I never really tasted things beforehand. Never thought it was necessary. I guess that just comes with the cocky and the arrogance of me. You have got to taste. If you're not tasting it, what are the customers experiencing? You know, Anthony should be tasting his food. He should know why the clientele is complaining. It's just hurting my business and it's hurting my family. Tomorrow, we have to be different, Anthony. It separates you from being average to something quite special. If you thought tonight was busy, whew, hey, God help you, because we are relaunching this restaurant tomorrow. I know it's late, get some sleep, a big day tomorrow. See you in the morning. Good night. I feel like it can't get any worse than it is now. Hopefully tomorrow is going to be a new beginning for everybody. In preparation for the relaunch, Gordon's team worked through the night updating Trobiano's stodgy interior. Good morning. Good morning. Right, big day today. Relaunch yes. day. A lot of changes. You didn't like this place when I first arrived. Yeah? You didn't like the decor, didn't like the lighting, and it was bland. Are you ready for a change? Yes. Let's go. Come through. Oh Come through. My God. Out with the old, in with the new. Oh my God, holy shit! It's warm, yes. I couldn't believe what I seen. I was definitely in the wrong place. I was dreaming. Everything was unbelievable. The chairs, the, the table forts, the boots. I mean, everywhere you look was beautiful. Oh, look at this! Oh. That's Italy on there, yes? Oh. You're running an Italian restaurant, so we're gonna have some authentic Italian pictures on the wall. I used to hate this place, I used to hate coming in here, but now with the new decor, everything just goes really well together. So everything is just perfect. It's romantic, it's warm, and more importantly, it's sexy. This is great. <laughs> Look at this! That is a mozzarella bar. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Are you happy? Happy is good man. Good man, good man. Yep, yep. <laughs> Come here. No, I'm happy, I'm like crying. I, know, I, know, I, know, I, know. I just can't believe it, I can't. It's more than I've ever, ever expected. It's beautiful. It's a total fresh start. You know, we're, we're going to take from today and just keep moving forward. OK, good. The menu, absolutely crucial. We've condensed it, and it's simple and rustic. Oh, my God. God. OK, no more salmon and bolognese sauce. It's authentic. Portions have been trimmed, and they're sensible portions. He showed us the menu. Wow. It was downsized. The prices were better. It's beautiful. It's all in place now. Tonight is where it's got to work. I'm a little nervous for Anthony. This is where he has to show what he's made of, so hopefully he can get that done. Coming up, with relaunch upon them, Trobianos is finally put to the test. The editor-in-chief of the Bon Appetit magazine. They want to join us for dinner. Oh, my God. This could be a great opportunity for Trobianos, or it could be the final nail in the coffin. Can Anthony and the staff rise to the occasion? The most important risotto you've made in your fucking life. Or will they crack under the pressure? What's the matter? This was cold in the middle. Uh, Just when it was going perfectly well, a fucking soul comes back. And at the end of service, a shocking surprise that will change this family for years to come. I was shocked. I never expected this in a million years. In preparation for the big relaunch, Gordon introduces the staff to the new dishes. Gone are the shrimp and the chicken and the dried out salmon. In their place, authentic Italian dishes. The sole, spicy roasted potatoes, rosemary garlic, salmon, the ribeye steak, and the lamb ragu. Homemade mozzarella. We've got hundreds of balls of fresh mozzarella. Right, have a taste. Wow, this is good. Taste the salad, Joe. That's good, yeah. Oh my god, salad. everything is so delicious. OK, guys, it is going to be a very important night, and it is absolutely crucial we stay together on it. Uh, one more thing. I had a phone call from the editor-in-chief of the Bon Appetit magazine. Uh, they want to join us for dinner. Wow. Oh, my God. I'm very nervous about tonight. You know, when he just told us about the critic coming, that scares the hell out of me. This is a real chance to put this place on the map. Just under six million people read that magazine per month. And I, I have to make sure Anthony stays on the right track with his cooking, with his tasting of the food. Everything is on the line. This could be a great opportunity for Trobianos, or it could be the final nail in the coffin. How are you? Very well, good, good. Huh? 
Hi, how are you? I'm Joe. How you doing? How are you doing? Oh, it looks nice. It looks just like a Manhattan to and I want to take I just wanted to tell you we're trying something new. We have a mozzarella bar. Here we go. Let's go. So they got one each. So six slices in there, six slices on there. Yeah. Excellent. See, bang. Yeah, 30 seconds, $80. Right. Off you go. Gotcha. There's one for you and one for you. What? This is, this is delicious, though. <laughs> Another one? Yeah, for four. Can't believe how well this has gone. This yeah. is unbelievable. It's extraordinary. I'm going to fill up on the appetizer. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, follow him behind with chicken parm. You got one ragu coming up. You tasting the food? Please tell me you taste it. Taste the fucking stuff, man. It's very important to keep the standards high. We have to impress a lot of people. We got a lot of things on the line here. No, I gotta make sure they're tasting the shit. I gotta watch them now. With Trobianos busier than it has been in years, the pressure is now on Anthony to keep up with the orders. But his staff must come through for him as well. Four. Kevin, table four. I have no idea what that is, bro. See, well, yeah, with vegetables, sorry. Danny, I have two 16s. Does not make sense, buddy. What's going on here? The wait staff here is killing me. Anthony, you can't read the fucking thing. Give it back to him, yeah? Yes. Here, take them, rewrite it right here. Quick, Kevin. Got to get these tickets sorted, otherwise you're going to get fucked in 15 minutes, yeah? Yes, chef, yes. While Anthony gets the staff in line. Are they finished with it? So is it fired right away? I need to know. Joe scans the dining room looking for the Bon Appetit table. Any sign of Bon Appetit yet? Oh, yeah, good. Eyes open, yeah? Tony, yes, sir. start pushing out these entrees now. Yes, You're on top of it now. Just stay on top of it, yeah? How we going, baby? Done? Yeah. Let's go. All right, enjoy. Oh. Wow. Yeah, why can't I make fish like this? Please watch that. Yeah, potential, yeah? Potential critic, yes? This and this, very nice. Go, 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 go. That's sweet. Is it really? I'm so sorry. Okay, no problem. Excuse me? Yes, what's the matter? This what's is wrong? cold in the middle. What table is that? Ten. Table off. 10. Oh, shit. Hey, just when it was going perfectly well, the fucking soul comes back. When the dish came back, the only thing that was running through my head was whether it was the bon appetit table. The traditional stuff is very good. Yeah, chicken parmesan, very good. We want all the pastas, the pork chops, lamb, to give everybody a little taste. You wanted one of each? Uh huh. Okay. Thank you. Okay, no problem. You're welcome. How do you know it's them? Uh, they ordered everything on the menu. And they're asking questions. They're asking questions. They're ordering a lot of wine. That is definitely a food critic. Anthony, table nine. It's six people. Yes. One of them, I think, is the critic. Step it up, yeah? Yes. Bounce back, come on. Let's go. OK, we're going to do table nine, a very, very, very important table. All right, here we go. Three minutes on the pasta, Tony. Looking good, looking good. Anthony, yeah, what's that risotto, yes? Yes, chef, yes. Hey, the most important risotto you've made in your fucking life. Look at that, huh? Beautiful. Table nine, risotto and ragu. I need a second bus for you, please. Quickly. Nine, please. Wow. Yeah. Everything's on the line tonight, and if we don't make it, then, you know, it's just going to be a disaster. Oh, that's lovely. It's the relaunch dinner, and Tiffany has just delivered entrees to the editor-in-chief of Bon Appetit. Now all the family can do is hope. I'm very nervous about the critics. I really do think that my business is at stake tonight. It's either going to make us or break us. I have a taste of the fish, Victoria. And the fish and the chicken are really winners. Thank you. And it's not overcooked. No, it was nicely cooked. And... It's good. Asking lots of questions, and more importantly, they're passing food round, which is a great sign. Yep. Not happy with it, you don't pass it. How is the bag? You like it? Yeah. Very good, right? Yes. Yeah. That was a nice recommendation. <laughs> good, yeah. thank you. Any complaints? No, no complaints at all. It's great that they're here, you know that. Huh? It's fantastic. It's amazing. No, it's a dream. Fly. Beautiful, beautiful. Awesome. I was at an all time high with Bon Appetit, knowing that if this positive review comes out, that it's going to put Trobianos above and beyond where we ever imagined. With a wealth of satisfied customers and a good response from Bon Appetit, Trobiano's relaunch is a success. But Chef Ramsay knew that Anthony still had some unfinished business. The restaurant's on his way. Tonight proved that. But there's one more thing. Look at this.
Beautiful. Wow, beautiful. Make an honest woman of her. <sighs> Shaken. This is unbelievable. This is coming from you? Yeah. To us? You've forgotten about it. And if there's one thing that's missing, it's that. And I know, personally, how long you've been putting it off because of the pressure from the restaurant. That is going to put an end to it, OK? Yeah, speechless. Thank you. Get up there. Stand strong. Tiffany's a great girl. She's put up with me for the past three years. There was no better time than tonight to go ahead with this. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to our chef patron, Anthony Tobriano. I just want to thank everyone for coming here. Um, you can see we've come a long way thanks to uh, Chef Ramsey here. And we've moved in such a positive direction that there's just one thing in my life that it hasn't been official. Oh. Tiffany? Oh. Will you marry me, Tiffany? Oh. 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 I was shocked that Anthony proposed to me in front of everybody. It was just incredible. I never expected this in a million years. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> it totally touched me to see Anthony propose to Tiffany, and I know this is what he's wanted. It's just unbelievable. It's a dream come true. You better make my daughter happy. <laughs> what do you mean? I'll fucking kick your ass. I have one more surprise for both of you. I've arranged for both of you to get married tonight. <laughs> <laughs> We were just totally shocked. With all the excitement of everything else going on, to top it off with a wedding? Come on. I thought I was going to die. Right? <laughs> oh my god, this is crazy. I love Anthony. I've been waiting for this for six years. We have a new life to start, so everything should just fall into place now. Tiffany and Anthony have come together to proclaim their undying love through the celebration of their marriage. I am filled with so many emotions. It was an amazing night. Son-in-law. It's unbelievable. There's no other word to describe all of this, really. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to say this family has been a pleasure to work with. Chef Ramsey did definitely save our lives. you got to be kidding me. If he didn't come here, Six months from now, we've probably been closed. I'm grateful, my family's grateful, and I hope this is a new beginning for all of us. Wow, amazing. I've seen many a dream turn into a nightmare. Tonight, a nightmare turned into a beautiful dream.